Oh my goodness, Roskills. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Roskills channel, man. We love this. Oh my goodness, man. I feel like Patrice Evra. I love this game. Nah, seriously, this is enjoyable for me. Everyone knows, despite me not giving a damn about Man United, in fact, I enjoy it when they fail. I really, really, for some reason, have a lot of rants on Solskjaer, their manager, Mr. Fantastic. I hate him a lot, man, I hate him. I think he's woeful. <laughs> I don't know why I care so much, but I feel like I had a long conversation with some Man United fans, some of them I know in real life. I had a long conversation with them one day, and ever since then, I started, more specifically, I just started trying to tell them he was crap. And after that conversation, man, I just enjoyed talking crap about their manager because I knew, okay, I know Ball. I knew he was crap. And when they signed my man Donny Van de Beek, okay, Van de Baller from Ajax, I was sad because I wanted him to go to a real club with a real manager to be utilized. Thomas Van de Beek, man, please. Van de Muller, man. I wanted him to go to a good club. He ended up at the theater of freaking nightmares. I'm gonna title this video something along the lines of why Manchester United need to sack Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Why Manchester United are crap. I don't know, something like that. This is the everything football show, so we can do everything we want. The number one problem with Solskjaer is the lack of identity. It's been, what, 19 months or 20 months at this rate? Almost two years. I swear, he came in as an interim, right? Mourinho got sacked in January of some point, and then he came in a few weeks later. Then he actually had a very good run of form. He won a lot of games. Don't know how. Paul Pogba was just doing some crazy things. Yeah, and then they ended up giving him a long-term contract. I don't know how that worked. Regardless, two years, no style of play, no identity. Every team has an identity. Bayern Munich, for example, we play in between the lines. Everyone knows this, yet you can't stop it. It's really how much we know how to do our own system that ends up with successes for us. Liverpool, everyone knows they spam crosses in, but it's really how well they know how to do it that gets them to success. It seems like every team that's successful has a style of play and they implement it very well. And so well that opposition, despite knowing that their opposition will do this, still can't stop it. But Manchester United still don't have a consistent way of playing. One week I'm seeing a back five, you're playing 50 billion midfielders, 50 billion strikers, and the next week, I don't understand what you're doing. It's cool to beat Man City three times in four games or something like that, but it doesn't matter if you go and lose to Crystal Palace the next week. Consistency is really breaded from playing in the same way in the same light. The thing with Liverpool is if Liverpool go ahead and lose 7-2 to any team, they still play like how Liverpool would play. That's it. That's the difference. They did lose 7-2 to some team. I don't remember. Oh, Aston Villa. Okay, that makes sense. Another thing is for a team that prides itself on playing in between the lines as United tried to do. I remember telling United fans that Sancho would not solve your problems. And they were all like, you know, we need a winger. You don't even play with wingers. You don't need a winger. <laughs> In fact, if anything, you need a fullback that can actually attack down the right-hand side and cover the width because you don't actually play with any actual wingers. Rashford, he cuts inside. Martial, he's a striker, right? Greenwood, he cuts inside. So how would Sancho, who also technically cuts inside, how would he fix your problems? A lot of United fans, when they envision winger, they're probably thinking of the old school winger where they hug the touchline and cross the ball in. I don't think a single winger in the world does that anymore. Every single winger wants to cut inside into their strong foot and whip it in top bins. That's how it happens these days. The people that actually end up providing the width for you would be your fullbacks. I thought Alex Tellez was a great signing. Why? Because he can actually move forward. And I think a right back that can actually run forward Juan Bissaka seems to be a very good fullback when he's given a lot to do, but again, he doesn't necessarily inflict fear into the hearts of his opposition on his side. So once again, I'm not exactly sure. In fact, you should blame your manager for this because despite him buying these players, you still don't have a certain identity. Why are you playing a high line with a bag of cement? This guy turns like a freaking 
Ford truck. <laughs> God. Yeah. <laughs> the opponent just scored. He's still turning. <laughs> oh my goodness. Harley, fantastic. Yeah, that's what your manager would say after. He'd probably say Maguayi, Lindy, fantastic. Deheyi, fantastic. <laughs> so a lot of United fans do blame their board and their owners, but you can't you can't complain about their spending. Now you can complain about how they spent, but not the money they spent. 250 million. I do, however, think Manchester United should get a director of football. They should get a structure. They should get a lot of a lot of things done. They should get a pedicure and a manicure while they're at it, because their hands are dirty. 250 million spent though. When you look at it, they did spend a lot of money. Bruno Fernandes came in, Van de Beek came in, who doesn't play, but he's clearly your best on the ball attacking midfielder because you have a midfielder there that plays like there's five seconds left in the game. Nothing wrong with that, but it seems like it's a lack of coaching why you can't get the best out of any player. I don't mind Bruno Fernandes, but I think he's very much of a, a risk taker, right? He tries these weird passes. I, I swear, I watched this guy versus Leipzig. There was this moment where he just tried to dink some weird ball and I don't know what was happening with that, but it was funny. I liked it. It was really funny. <laughs> Your owners are crap, but you can't blame them for picking certain players over other players. I think any competent club would have sacked their manager by now. The fact that you're actually still trying to argue why people should back your manager is all the more reason why he should be sacked. How are you trying to figure out and conjure up things that your manager did right? They should just be evident. How is the guy coming in, getting you to the Europa League, and then <laughs> two years later or a year later, <laughs> he's getting you into the Europa League? What was the progression? In fact, you regressed. Because remember, Mourinho actually got you out of the group stages. And there are a lot of United fans saying, well, Mourinho was right. Paul Park bought you a virus. You know, Mourinho was wrong for Manchester United at the time. And so is Solskjaer now. If anything, blame your board for that. For going for Mourinho and regressing. Jose, Jose, is this me Jose? I know my styles of management. I will regress. You, I will buy Matic. <laughs> I'm enjoying this one. Mourinho is a trophy winning manager, which is why he fits Spurs so perfectly. Because they have a squad, a world class squad, if you look at all their players, they added to it, and now they're on their way to win a trophy. They will win a trophy this year. But then after maybe a season, the players will be like, damn, we play boring. The fans will start wanting some more entertaining ball, and they'll sack Mourinho, and then they'll get someone else. That's how it works with Jose. Yeah. That's how it works. It's normal like that. Mourinho is a trophy winner. You bring him in to win trophies, not build the team. So to the United fans that are like, well, Mourinho was right, and now we have Solskjaer. You're just picking the wrong side. You can be both anti-Mourinho and also anti-Solskjaer. Man, I'm such a good opinion giver. So you don't have a style of play. You don't have a philosophy. Your board is all messed up and your signings don't make any damn sense or fit any certain style of play. So you're a crap team. So yeah, thank you everyone so much for watching this. Me, I send me. I mean, bye. God. <laughs> uh.